Hey everyone, so today I'm getting ready to uh, do my top end on my bike and I thought I would share the uh, fan setup that I have on my bike. Um, I've been waffling for a little bit on it a couple months ago. A um, little tight on money and I wasn't able to quite convince myself to get the uh, Trail Tech version. And to add on to that, I wasn't quite sure if the Trail Tech would work with the 7602 radiator guards. So what I did is uh, after a little bit of research, I uh, created my own sort of fan with shut off and uh, or automatic turn on, automatic shut off. And I uh, just kind of wanted to walk you guys through how I did it and how you can do it yourself. So to start, I ordered a wire harness from a company called Cyclops Adventure. That's a local Washington uh, brand. They're based down in Kent if you're a Washington person. And um, it's very similar to um, the harness that Kyle Brotherson and Hard Enduro Life had uh, recommended. But it comes in at about half the price and it's a relayed uh, power supply. The relay is this guy right here. It comes out with two power leads that are uh, controlled by the EECU. So what that means is when you're turning on the bike, that's the only time these guys will get power. So typically, the reason I bought it would be for the headlight. I have the HRB VSL headlight, but with the extra set of leads, I was able to also wire up my fan that I created here. So to install this, um, there's a little relay here. I just zip tied it. There's a peg just like that under here. So zip tied it onto there to keep it in place. And then under the ECU, see if I can pop this off while holding the camera. There's this white plug right here. Where the yellow lead comes out, that's part of the kit that comes here. But there's just this empty white plug down here on the XC models. So from here, this wire comes out. It goes into this wire harness here. And that's as far as the leads go on this. So you are going to have to be comfortable with crimping wires. And uh, you are going to need a little bit of your own two conductor. Um, I used, I believe I used 16-2 stranded, um, does the trick. Um, so from here, with these wires, I brought the wires up, followed the loom until here, and then brought the wires down under this harness. Once I came in here, I bought this thermocoupler switch right here. Um, I'll post a link on here for you guys to go and find that. Same with uh, the harness and for the fan. I'll keep that all included for you guys. Um, what this is, is this little coupler right here has a metal rod or a brass rod that goes through the fins on your fan or on your radiator. I don't know if you can kind of see it. And you can't really see it, but it pokes through to the end here. I had to cut it short, but uh, it still works just fine. And I took some JB weld and just kind of stuck it around the corners here just to keep it in place so it wouldn't come out. And what happens is when this probe reaches 185 degrees, it closes the circuit. So what I did is I have the negative wire coming from here on this side and then this wire is going to the negative of the fan. The positive is tied all the way through to the fan. Um, I will draw this up as a schematic at the end of uh, this walkthrough so you guys can see exactly what I did. But what happens is this will short and it will complete the circuit giving power to the fan at 185 degrees. It will stay on until this probe reads 165 degrees. So this is basically doing exactly what the, the Trail Tech fan does. You aren't able to get nitpicky with it, but if you feel confident that you know what temperatures you want to set it at, um, you can just go this route and it's more of an analog system. Um, I personally think it's less points of failure. It's a little more sturdy. You're just kind of stuck with the temperature settings that you go for. So from here, I bought this fan directly from Spall. Um, I looked up the tech specifications, um, the millimeters. I took my calipers and measured. There's pre-drilled mounting holes on the 7602 racing uh, our radiator guards. So three of them match up. Fourth one up here doesn't. This thing is very snug with just three of them. I took a bolt that went through here. I believe it was a 824 or a 1024. And I just got the matching bolt. Um, I just went to Home Depot. I brought my fan into Home Depot. 
and uh, measure them up. Um, the length was one inch. That's all I needed was just a one inch screw. So one inch with these nuts, you're good to go. And then as you can see here, um, I did put a dab of super glue on these bolts just to keep them from working their way out because I didn't have thread locker. So a thread locker will do the trick or super glue will do the trick. But this is my analog uh, fan system and it's been working great. I've had it on here for a few months now. It kicks on, it turns off when I feel like it should. I've had zero overheating issues ever since. So let's work our way over to the whiteboard and I'm gonna draw up how I have this wired for you guys. So from here, we have our relay that I bought from Cyclops. We have our battery. The battery is connected to the relay with a positive wire. And then from here, this relay will plug into the ECU with that little, uh, with that little cable that I showed you at the bottom under the ECU. So from here, the relay now has controlled positive and negative wires coming out of it. Coming out, the positive will come over here directly to the fan. So the positive is going to get connected directly to this. Nothing's going to go in between these. Okay. Now the negative is going to come out and it's going to go down to that little controller, the little thermocoupler that I installed that I pushed through the fins. So we have this little thermocoupler. There's a little fin that goes, or the probe that goes through the fins. The negative is going to connect to this little fit, uh, blade here. And then this other blade on the other side, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's not uh, polar or it's not polarized. It's not sensitive. Either one will do fine. Then from here, we're going to run this wire out to the negative of the fan. It's really simple. Um, you don't really have to overthink it. I've done the groundwork for you. I have all the links on here. This is a really easy way to control your fan so they'll shut off when it doesn't need to be on. It'll turn on only when it needs to be on. And then if you're adding a uh, headlight while you're at it, all you would do is just bring the positive directly from here into your headlight. We'll call that our headlight. And the negative will just come up and go directly to your headlight also. There's no need to put any of these fancy splices on here because the relay is only giving power when the bike is on. So if you guys want to take a look at that again, um, really simple to do. It cost me about half the price of a trail tech. Granted, you don't get the warranty of a trail tech, but guys, I mean, hundred bucks is a hundred bucks. It adds up quickly on a bike. So um, if you guys have any questions, please message, feel free to, uh, DM me on Instagram. Uh, the Instagram is Zach.Castilla. I'm always up to talk tech with you guys. If you guys have any questions on this, if you want any more in-depth videos, I'd be more than happy to. And just a quick refresher, got the relay from Cyclops Auto, goes over, plugs into this guy right here. I tucked my flying leads into this, made my terminations, brought the wire under the loom over to here. There's the thermocoupler right there. I could have switched these. It doesn't matter. These will connect the circuit when the temperature reaches 185 degrees, comes up to the fan, turns it on. And then once it goes down to 165, fan will stop. 